My name is Stanislaw and welcome to MO2. MO2 is a plugin that allows you to quickly and easily add, customize, and animate 3D models and tech directly within Motion 5 and Final Cut Pro 10. To get started with MO2, let's create a blank composition. Let's navigate to our generators, motion VFX, and MO2. And let's place that into our scene. Once loaded, MO2 will place a background into our canvas. To activate the camera controls, let's right click in the canvas and select control or in our tool panel, navigate to adjust item. This will activate the different modes, different cameras and camera settings in MO2. Let's collapse that for right now. In our inspector, we can see that MO2 consists of scene settings and scene content. In our scene settings, we have environments, backgrounds and render settings. Let's go ahead and move down to our scene content. By default, we have a default camera in our scene. Let's go ahead and add an object to our scene. To add objects to our scene, let's select our Add Object button. From here, we can choose specific models, 3D text, instancers, lights, nulls, and cameras. When hovering over our Model tab, you'll notice that we have a series of different items. By navigating over these, we can see little previews of our different items. Let's go ahead and start with adding 3D text. By selecting 3D text, it will place a default 3D text into our scene. In my scene content, I can see that a text item has been added, along with the parameters for that text item. By navigating down to the extrusion settings, I can go ahead and change this if I choose to. Any changes in your text will be reflected immediately. From here, we can choose our different fonts, font styles, and other text parameters. Clicking on the Style button will launch the Text Preset Style Library. From here, I can choose different styles, and by clicking on them, it will apply them to my text. Let's navigate to Plastic. Select OK to confirm your selection. Let's adjust this text a little further. By using the Extrusion Depth slider, we can set a specific depth for our text. Adjusting the weight will increase and decrease the amount of depth each layer has in our text. The bevel weight slider will adjust only the bevel of your text layer. Lastly, I'm going to move my tracking and just give this a little bit more space. Now that we have text in our scene, let's go ahead and give it a plane to rest on. I'll navigate to my model, my primitives, and plane. Once I have my plane in my scene, Let's navigate down to the primitive settings. Our primitive settings are going to be adjustable per primitive. I can see that it's intersecting my text here. And what I want to do is lower this. So what I can do is move to my basics and my basic control will affect the position, scale, rotation, anchor point, and animation. In this example, I'm adjusting the Y position of this plane. Now that we have a plane for our text to rest on, let's apply a material to that plane. To apply a material to an object in our scene, click the Add Material button. Just like previewing our 3D objects, we can navigate to the various different categories and review our different items. To view available materials with larger images, select From Library. In our library, we have the same categories as our dropdown along with a Favorites. In this example, I'm using the Basic Surface 20 from the Basics panel. Before we go, let's go ahead and mark this as Favorite. By clicking the star and navigating to my Favorites panel, you can see that it's updated here. And I'll click OK. Our scene content has been updated to show that we have a material applied to our plane. By selecting our material, that will take us into our Material panel. Materials are based on physical-based rendering and are made up of several different texture channels. Our albedo channel will change the color of our material. For information on normals, metalness, and the remainder of our texture items, refer to our lesson on materials. We can adjust our texture mapping by clicking on our texture mapping dropdown. To adjust our UV offset and scale, let's open up our mapping settings panel. Let's change this material by dialing down the size of the tile to 0.5 and 0.5 which, as you can see, makes our material two times smaller than it was before. To make things interesting, let's add another object to our scene. I'll click on Add, 
and this time let's select an instance or preset. We'll choose our tile rounded wall. In our scene, you can see that it has a default material applied to it, and we have a new item in our scene content. Our scene content is comprised of a tree of different items. For example, if I open up my tiled wall, we have an arc instancer. Inside our arc instancer, we have a cube, meaning that this tiles rounded wall object was built first by replicating a cube using a radial instancer, and then replicating the resulting arch a couple times by placing it within a linear instancer. I'll collapse that for right now. Now that we have our scene, let's start working with this control panel. We have two main modes in our canvas control panel. We have our beauty mode and we have our construction mode. Beauty mode is meant for viewing and tweaking the final render. When enabled, all post-processing effects such as depth of field, motion blur, AO, etc. will be calculated and applied to the rendered frame. An additional menu will become available in the upper left hand part of the OSC, which will help with making quick adjustments to the now enabled post processing effects. This menu also contains buttons for the pick and link focus features. The other mode is the constructor mode. As its name suggests, constructor is mainly meant for constructing the scene. In this mode, the computationally heavy effects such as depth of field or ambient inclusion are disabled, so it's perfect for fast modifications in complex scenes as well as for building scenes from scratch on slower machines. To the right of our different modes, we have our camera controls. Please note that MO2 uses its own camera system, and if we end up adding a camera to our scene, it will not work the same way. That is because MO2 uses its own 3D space for its animation. To our right side, we have our pan, orbit, and zoom. Using the camera controllers, the camera will orbit around any selected item. If nothing is selected, it will orbit around the center of your scene. Let's line up our scene using these camera controls. When clicking on items directly in our scene, they will become highlighted and a 3D gizmo will appear at the anchor point of the selected item. Additionally, when choosing items in our scene, they will become highlighted in our scene content control panel. By selecting items in the scene content control panel, they'll become available inside the canvas as well. To see an object completely inside of our canvas, let's select the frame object button located next to the camera controls. This button is meant for positioning the camera so that the current selected object fills the screen. Now that we can see our mesh entirely, let's adjust it using the 3D gizmo controller. With the 3D gizmo, we can adjust the position of our different items, the scale, as well as the rotation. All these controls are available in our basics panel per item. Let's focus back on our text layer. Using the frame object button, let's center on our text one more time. Let's go ahead and make this scene a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna go ahead, navigate to my library, and add a cylinder. Once I have my cylinder in my scene, let's adjust it with the primitive settings. Let's increase the radius and reduce the height. Now that I have my cylinder in my scene, let's duplicate this cylinder. I can right click this and duplicate it. We may want to start organizing these. Let's go ahead and double click this item and we're going to name this one Stage. We'll take our second cylinder, double click it, and name this one Stage Light. Now that we have our stage light selected, let's reduce the radius and move it in the Y position. Let's apply a new material to this item. I'll click on material and let's create a new material. By default, it'll give us a default material. Let's scroll down to these different options. If I adjust my luminance, this will act as a material that is giving off light. To change the color of the illumination, let's select the color swatch and pick a new color. Let's apply a material to our stage. I'll click on my stage, add material, and we'll add another one from the library. This time, I'm going to add basic surface 16, and I'll hit OK. Once here, I can adjust this material further. For example, let's make this a little bit darker. At any time, I can jump back into my beauty mode to see how things are shaping up. Let's go ahead and close this 
control panel for right now and continue working with our scene. I'm going to select my MO2 and using the gizmo, I can place this on top of my stage. Let's make this panel a little bit brighter. To increase the brightness, I'll add some more illuminance to this. Let's give it a tint. Next, let's adjust its metalness. Metals in general are a lot more reflective. Making it more metallic will make its reflection stronger. Now we can see that it is reflecting our environment layer. Let's add a light to our scene. I'll click on Add, Light, and let's choose Spot. It's a little hard to see in Beauty Mode, so let's go in Construct Mode. I'll zoom out just so I can see my scene a little bit better. I can use the 3D Gizmo to adjust where my light is in my scene. I can see which way the light is pointing as well as how the light is projecting onto our scene. Let's go ahead and move this back. Light objects in MO2 have their own light control panel underneath the basics panel. We can adjust our light color, intensity, radius, and so on. For my purposes, we're going to give this a smooth angle. Let's turn our beauty mode back on. Let's go ahead and enable shadows in our light control. And this will create dynamic shadows for our text. So as we are moving through our scene, we can see those shadows from our objects onto the rest of our scene. MO2 comes with several different animation presets. Let's select our text to animate it. By selecting our text and moving down to the bottom of our extrusion settings, we'll have our text behaviors. By clicking on the text behaviors button, that'll take us to our text behavior library. Inside here are dozens of animations of animating text in, and out. Let's go ahead and select Arrive In. When I play this back, I can see that this is arriving into our scene. I can also see that in my behaviors, an Arrive In has been added. Now that we've animated our text, let's animate our camera. By selecting our camera, we can move down to our Basics tab and open Animation. From here, we can set our object behavior. Inside our object behaviors, we have hundreds of different animation presets to choose from. Let's choose our position X and let's glide X in. And I'll set OK. To adjust the duration of this behavior, we'll move down to the duration tab underneath our animation. In addition to behaviors, we can also set manual keyframes for our different items. Let's animate the rotation of this camera as it's moving into the scene. To make sure we have this focused, let's go to our rotation control and set a keyframe. If I move back to the beginning of my scene, we can adjust our rotation to take place over time just like every other keyframe. If we want to adjust those keyframes, we can open up our keyframe editor and finesse our graph any which way we choose. Now that we have our scene animated, let's do some final cleanup. I'm going to make this a bit larger using our gizmo. And I'll do the same with our instancer. If we want to change our framing, we can still adjust our camera and our rotation and our behavior should still work accordingly. Be aware, if your camera is animated using keyframes, adjusting its viewing direction via on-screen controls will add new keyframes to the property. Before we finish up, let's organize our project a little bit better. Let's add a null to organize some of these different items. By adding a null, we can place several different items by dragging and dropping them to create groups in which items can be all moved together. As an example, we can either move our text independently, or by using the null, we can move the entire group all together. This will not affect the original properties of the different items. Using the beauty mode, let's add some post-processing effects. Increasing the focus amount will introduce more focus blur. 
we can use our pick focus control to selectively choose which areas that we want in focus while leaving other areas out of focus. So we can quickly and easily change our focus plane depending on what we have in our scene. That's probably a little too much defocus, so let's pull that back. Previously, we've applied object behaviors to single items, but we can also apply object behaviors to entire groups. To demonstrate this, let's select the null we created just a moment ago. If I move to the bottom of my Basics tab, you'll find I have my object behaviors. I'll click on that. Let's choose an Animate Out of Mixed. I'm going to choose Land Out. You'll notice that my animation starts at the beginning of the timeline. To have it start at a different time, let's select the time we'd like it to start and start from current frame. Let's try that again. That's a brief overview of using MO2 in Apple Motion. For more information on MO2, including more tutorials, please visit www.motionvfx.com.